Hey guys, it's Dave again, back with another video. I know that usually uh, this is an investing channel and I always talk about investing, but um, I was just so extremely excited about James Webb Space Telescope coming online that I just had to make a video for it. So I understand if you're not interested in this one, if you're really looking for companies to invest in and inv investment videos, this might not be for you. But um, I just really think this is an extremely massive moment for the entire world. It's extremely exciting. I'm a bit of a space and science nerd myself, so uh, I just am ex really excited for it, and I just really wanted to make something. So um, if this one isn't for you, I understand. Uh, feel free to move on to the next video. I'll be back to my usual stuff soon. But if, uh, if you're at all interested in this, uh, let's dive deep on the exciting new James Webb Space Telescope. So first of all, I'd just like to share with you uh, some footage about why the James Webb is so extremely in important to the future of astronomy and science and our knowledge of the universe. Uh, we're going to hear from astrophysicists astrophysic Brian Cox. He is an extremely famous science communicator and astrophysicist out of uh, the UK. Scientists are excited because this gigantic instrument could look beyond to distant worlds around other stars and probe the mysterious structures and origins of our universe and our place in it. The Webb Telescope can look at light that's been stretched, much more stretched than Hubble. And if you want to look far out into the universe, which means far, far back in time, then the further out you look, the further back in time you go, and the more stretched the light. And so the Webb is able to look at the formation of the first stars. If you look at something from which the light has been traveling 13 billion years to reach us, let's say, then you're looking at things as they were in the first billion years in the life of the universe. So the web, first of all, is going to look at the formation of the first stars and galaxies. It's also powerful enough to look at exoplanets, so planets around different stars. So the web is going to be able to look at planets that we've discovered around distant stars and tell us whether the atmosphere has water vapor in it or is that it would see a planet with oxygen in the atmosphere. So the web is tremendously exciting. I always found it mind-blowing the first time I heard about how uh, when you're looking at light from distant stars or galaxies in the night sky and it is actually taking potentially billions of years to get from that source to us. Uh, therefore, what you're seeing is what was there when that light was first sent off on its journey billions of years ago. If, so the further away you can see into the universe, the further back you're seeing in time and what those uh, objects were like back in time. And Webb will be able to see further than we've ever seen before by a wide margin. So we'll be really looking back into the very beginnings of the universe and getting um, a lot more information on how things started. And um, also, I just find it extremely fascinating to learn about distant exoplanets out there, uh, what their atmospheres may be composed of, whether they'll have oxygen in their atmosphere, which could be an indicator of life, as well as liquid water molecules in their atmosphere. Uh, I still remember growing up, um, we didn't even know if those stars out there had planets or not. I mean, it stood to reason that they should, but we we had no evidence of it. We just couldn't see it. They were too small next to these giant bright stars. We couldn't tell. So to get all this new information in my lifetime, it's uh, extremely interesting. And I really hope we find some planets out there with oxygen or liquid water. I think that would be extremely exciting. And I'm just really interested in finding out... Um, what we learn about these distant planets. I mean, think about it. For the entirety of human history, like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, we've ne we haven't we have known if there's life anywhere outside of Earth. And uh, the fact that in our lifetimes we might find out the answer to that question is extremely mind-blowing, extremely humbling, ex extremely shocking. So um, every step forward on that path is extremely exciting and the data web gets us will bring us one step closer. Also, uh, I don't know if you saw the the giant, uh, it almost looked like sails 
below the honeycomb shape. These are to prevent the heat from the sun uh, interfering with the mirrors. The honeycomb mirrors have to be extremely cold in order to operate properly. So there's several layers of protective, um, almost like aluminum foil type material to radiate that heat back away from the telescope. It was an extremely complicated thing to set up and required a lot of work and problem solving on behalf of the scientists. Okay, so next let's hear from uh, CNN and more importantly, director for the Space Science Institute from Maryland, uh, Ken Sembach, as he just talks about how uh, important and profound the James Webb Space Telescope will be. The team inside the Webb Space Telescope's flight control room is preparing to reveal what astronomers all over the world have been waiting for for decades. The telescope's first full-color images, which are expected to be light years more impressive than the test images released last month and will include the deepest image of our universe that's ever been taken. Our view of the universe is definitely going to change on July 12th. Ken Sembach runs the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, Maryland, home to Webb's mission control, and he predicts the day that Webb's first images are released will be on par with the day that Galileo became the first person to ever point a telescope to the sky. There will be a universe we knew before Webb and a universe we know after Webb. I really mean that. I think our perspective will change. Very exciting to hear that. I can't believe we're talking about comparing the first time anyone actually used a telescope to look at the stars to um, versus before with the naked human eye to uh, what Webb will do for our current view of the universe. Extremely profound stuff, extremely different, and um, really exciting to hear him talk about uh, how <laughs> we're entering a new era of astronomy with this important space telescope. In order for us to finally get to this point, we've had to overcome so many challenges, so many hurdles, so many problems. Uh, a lot of people thought this day may never come, that web may, nev may not be successful. Um, Development for the telescope began actually in 1999, so you know several decades ago for sure. A, a launch was initially planned for as early as 2007, and the budget was only 500 million dollars. Um, there were so many delays, so many cost overruns. There was a major redesign in 2005. During testing, the sun shield got ripped, and uh, they needed to be repaired and redesigned. There was a threats by U.S. Congress to cancel the project due to cost overruns. And of course, the COVID pandemic caused all sorts of problems as the launch was getting ramped up to go right when the pandemic hit. So the total cost of the project is now uh, expected to come in around $10 billion or more precisely 9.7. So that's a 19.4 times the original cost that was projected for the telescope. So uh, ended up costing way more than they initially expected. And, you know, no wonder it was almost canceled by Congress. Um, another challenge is that unlike Hubble, the James Webb cannot be serviced uh, if there's any issues with it after it's launched. So if it runs into problems, uh, that's it. It's done. Um, if you'll remember when the Hubble launched back in the day, there was a problem with the alignment of its mirrors not working properly. And so it was uh, basically useless. And luckily, we were able to launch a space shuttle with astronauts out to the Hubble in order to fix this problem and allow us to, to get the mind-blowing images we're familiar with today. If we had something similar like this happen to Hubble, then that $10 billion and you know, 20 years of work is down the drain. Uh, there's no way to get out there and fix it. And that's because Hubble is just so much closer to Earth than the James Webb is. So the James Webb is 1 million miles away from Earth. That's like a mind boggling number. It's hard to even imagine, like put into context. Whereas the Hubble was only 340 miles <laughs> from the Earth. So uh, not even close. There's no way for us to send people out there, send robots out there to fix it. It's not been designed to be serviced. It's like our one shot, and it has to be perfect the first time. Uh, so, And uh, other challenges include uh, the fact that out in space, objects travel at extremely fast speeds. So even something small, like a grain of dust, if it runs into the James Webb and hits it, can have, like, can have the energy of a bullet and cause massive damage to the to the mirrors of the of this telescope. Unfortunately, we have had an impact into one of the mirrors, one of those little uh, 
octagon shaped honeycombs and uh, there was some damage but luckily it's confined to one of those mirrors that's one of the benefits of having it segmented like this and they are able to correct for the damage so there is some impact to the data but it is still performing above the levels they expected prior to launch so we've been able to deal with this damage and um and get past it and move on. So here's hoping that we don't have any more impacts really damaging this amazing telescope that we've put so much time and effort into, really as an entire planet, as an entire species. It's been so difficult, so challenging to get to this point. It's been truly an international effort with all sorts of countries contributing a massive multi-decade project in order to build this new telescope that will give us a new view of the universe and teach us all sorts of things. Uh, I think the most exciting thing is like we don't know what we don't know, right? So who knows what we're going to see out there and what we're going to learn about this universe that we live in. Um, all sorts of problems that had to be overcome, all sorts of issues all led up to today when we're finally getting our first images and first data from the telescope. Uh, that has been decades in the making. All that being said, uh, July 12th is the day we'll get our first images, so uh, definitely keep an eye on NASA's website. I'm sure it'll be all over the news, all over YouTube. I encourage you to check out the brand new images. I'm sure we won't as lay people understand the fine details of how precise the measurements are and how accurate they are, but we can still definitely enjoy the pictures and uh that is kind of your primer on why you should be paying attention to this on tuesday i'll see you guys next time so long for now